Hey folks, Alan Manic, the Hot Rod Hippie here. Today's video, we're gonna talk a little bit about the fact that I've been on YouTube as the Hot Rod Hippie for a year now, and we're gonna answer some of your questions in a little Q&A session. So let's get to it. So just over a year ago, I uploaded my first YouTube video as the Hot Rod Hippie. That first video from a year ago was my comparison of the Porter Cable Restorer versus the Eastwood SCT Contour Stripping Tool. I did a product review of those. It was about 17 minutes long, I think, after I edited it down from like 25 minutes long just to get it to that point. I set out to do honest tool reviews, tips and tricks, and some how-to stuff. Over the past year, I've seen that folks really enjoy the how-to stuff, especially when it comes to the metal shaping, so I've been focusing a little bit more on that as time goes. However, I don't want to ignore the rest of the things. I'm going to continue to do quality product reviews, tips and tricks about various parts of building a car, show coverage, shop tours, and of course, metal shaping how-to videos. I also want to get to doing some project stuff, bring in some projects of my own to start showing you bits and pieces as I go building things. We will get there in time. Sitting here right now, I'm sitting at 4,241 subscribers on the channel. That is excellent. I am so happy you folks are here and enjoying the content that I'm creating. Now, once I hit 5,000 subscribers, I'm going to be doing a giveaway. I don't have the details worked out as to what I'm going to be giving away, but Free stuff is free stuff. I'm sure you folks will love that. So I'm a little over 750 subscribers away from, well, 759 to be exact, away from that 5,000 goal. So if you have friends who might be interested in my content, might just enjoy watching whatever the heck I do, flailing about like I do, go ahead and share my videos, send them to your friends, get them involved so we can go ahead and hit that 5,000 goal. I'm going to be going to SEMA in October and I'm planning to do some serious event coverage at SEMA. Some new product stuff, show builds, all kinds of things. I'm gonna be doing interviews and a lot of things while I'm at the show. I really wanna grow the audience by then so I can really reach people out there, show them what it is I'm doing and all the work that I'm gonna be putting in that whole week that I'm gonna be in Las Vegas. In this past year, I have made 87 videos. This will be the 88th one right here. So that's a lot of work, folks. I put a lot of time and effort into these videos, and I really hope you appreciate the amount of work that I put into them and just the, the love and care I have for them. Along with that, last week from the July 4th holiday, I asked some of you folks to go ahead and submit questions. You did so via Facebook, Instagram, email, and YouTube, and I'm really thankful for that. So I'm gonna go ahead and answer the questions that you asked. Some of you asked a handful of questions within one comment, and I'm not necessarily gonna to get to all of them. I might pick and choose out of what it is you asked me just to keep this flowing. Without further ado, Let's get into it. So our first question comes from the comment section of YouTube from a fellow named Mark Trombley. I'm sorry if I butcher any of your names, by the way. I'm not gonna stop and apologize every time. I think that's how you pronounce your name. If it is, yay. If not, sorry. So his first question is, why the name Hot Rod Hippie? Well, the name Hot Rod Hippie came about because I knew this was gonna be a car-centric and tool-centric YouTube channel. So I wanted to go along with that theme. And by the standards of the automotive industry, I'm a hippie, there's no way around it. I'm vegan, so I don't eat anything that comes from an animal. I drive a Prius for my daily driver. I live in Western Massachusetts. By the standards of Western Massachusetts, I am by no means a hippie. I build hot rods for a living, but by the standards of the automotive industry, on the other hand, I'm pretty much a wheatgrass sipping hippie. And his final question is, why are clowns so creepy? I am not qualified to answer that, but yes, Yes, they are. Next question comes via YouTube comment section again. This is from R37. R37 asked, what are some essential tools for working on a car, doing rust repair, body work, things like that? And can you do a quality job simply with hand tools? Well, let me answer the hand tool thing first. Hand tool thing, yeah, you can do a quality job with only hand tools. Pretty much just about anything you do in metal work can be done with simply hand tools. I mean, really, if you think about it, things like a power hammer, a planishing hammer, they are doing the same actions as you hammering on a piece of metal with your hands. They just do it much more rapidly and maybe with more force than you can generate yourself. All that means is they're allowing you to do the same job in a much quicker fashion. At the end of the day, you could do everything by hand the same. It would just be a very tedious process, but if you have the time to commit to it, 
You can do a lot of things with hand tools and not need bead rollers, pull maxes, power hammers, planishing hammers, anything like that. The one thing that is borderline is an English wheel. The, the way that English wheel works is a little hard to recreate by hand in any form or fashion, but you can get English wheels fairly reasonably, though the cheaper ones are definitely questionable as far as their quality. So what are essential tools? Well, essential tools for like rust repair, as you asked, definitely first and foremost, big thing you're gonna need is hammers and dollies. Hammers and dollies are just, they're critical when it comes to doing quality metal shaping jobs. If you're gonna be doing things by hand, you're gonna need them. If you're gonna be replacing panels even with just patch panels and, and just welding on a replacement piece, you're gonna need that hammer and dolly to smooth out that weld seam, things like that. So really, number one, the most important thing you can have as a metal shaping tool is a flat-faced body hammer. Pick one of those up. That is the most versatile hammer for metal shaping just because you're gonna need it for all of your finish work. And he had a third question. Third question is cat or dog man? So cat-sized dogs and cats that act like dogs, because my cats are not like stereotypical. If you rub their bellies, they love it. They don't scratch and claw at you. They don't bite. They never attack. They don't claw up the furniture. They are perfect little angels. Our next question comes from Jess on Instagram. Her question is, do I have any dream builds? I definitely have a couple of dream builds. Uh, actually, quite a few of them. I think as anybody who builds cars for a living, you've got ideas rolling around in your head all the time. But definitely the dream build that I wanna to get to as sooner rather than later, hopefully I can make that the first project video for this YouTube series, is my own Roadster project. I wanna build from scratch a full-on Roadster. Frame, body, whole nine yards. It's gonna be powered by a small block Chevy. I know, stereotypical, but I'm a Chevy guy. I always have been. And I'm gonna run a 471 supercharger on it. In fact, I already have the supercharger. It's the first component I have for the build. It's sitting on the shelf in my studio. You see it in every video that you watch, more than likely. Next question is from Tweak E in the YouTube comment section. He asks, what's with the tats? Uh, I really like them. I enjoy them. I have been getting them since I turned 18. Like two days after I turned 18, I got my first tattoo and I have not stopped since. I enjoy being tattooed. I like the way I look this way. So it's a personal preference thing, I guess. He also asks if I have any tattoos that have any really special meaning to me. I have a Mack truck bulldog on my chest right about here. I spent a lot of time with my grandfather because both of my parents worked when I was a kid and he had just retired from Mack trucks at that time. So I spent so much time with him when I was growing up and I lost him a few years back and coming up on quite a few years now, but big influence in my life. I miss him, I loved him. So I got a Mack truck bulldog on my chest to uh, go ahead and, you know, honor him and uh, to reflect that history in my life. Our next question comes from Instagram as well, from Brianna. Her question is, what is your favorite video and what video would you like to redo if you could? I've definitely enjoyed some more than others, but uh, for me, I think personally, the shop tour videos I've been doing and car show videos, I really enjoy doing those. And as for the uh, second part of that question, one video that I wish I could redo, Honestly, I kind of wish I could redo like the first five, six months of this channel. I film in 4K now, I have much better audio equipment, much better lighting, sound control. I've changed a lot of things about the way I do videos and I'm doing the best that I can right now. And honestly, a year from now, I'll probably look at this video and go, Ugh, I shouldn't have done things that way. I should have done this different, that different, whatever. I'm gonna keep aiming to improve and that's all I can do. Our next question comes from Leo Leonidas of Spartan on the comment section of YouTube. He asks, which do I prefer, air drill or cordless drill? And what brand am I using, whichever one I prefer? Personally, I rarely break out the air drill anymore. I just don't have much use for it. It is cut the cord all the way for me. I use a 3 8 Milwaukee small drill for my pilot holes, eighth inch, 3 16 holes. And any of the bigger stuff, I step up to my Milwaukee brushless 18 volt drill for those bigger jobs. In the YouTube comment section again, the Moto Fixery asked, if your hands were tied behind your back, would you be able to speak? Yes, of course I'd be able to speak. I mean, I know I talk with my hands a lot. I try to be engaging. I know I can be a little overboard at times, but folks, I, I want, if I just sat here like this, and talk to you like this on a continuous basis, I think it would be pretty boring. I try to be engaging to point to things that I know are gonna be on the screen after I edit, to point to things that I'm trying to get you to focus on a little bit in the videos. So, I mean, yeah, obviously, see, if I put my arm...
Our next question comes from Jason Chaffin uh, via Facebook. He asks, what's my current playlist? What am I listening to right now? So I'm on a bit of a like folk bluegrass kick. So like White Buffalo, Murder by Death, mostly Dead South. The Dead South, I really enjoy that band. Really been liking that. But uh, maybe I'll throw a comment down below with like a few of the bands and some of the songs that I've really been enjoying lately. He also had a second part to his question, which was, what tool brand is exceeding my expectations outside of the tool truck brand? So not the Snap on the Maco. I'd have to say, honestly, for me, SunX has really been stepping up their game lately. They've been really focusing on improving their hand tool line, creating a wider range of products and bringing out more stuff. And I've been pretty impressed with everything I've laid my hands on so far. Last but most certainly not least in the YouTube comment section, we got Dave Haverman asking, who am I? I didn't know we were gonna be getting like all existential in this whole thing, really bringing me down a peg there. No, really, he asks, who am I? What is my claim to fame? Uh, my claim to fame is just existing, honestly. I'm nobody special in my mind or probably pretty much anybody else's mind either. I'm just a dude who thought he could make some videos, wanted to have some fun with it, just create a hobby for himself. But really, I'm a fabricator. I build custom cars. I've worked a range of places across the country at this point. I was a tool salesman for a little while. I was a Matco tool distributor running my own truck. And I was also a dealership auto technician when I first got into the auto industry. I'm the son of a carpenter, so I have woodworking skills. You know, as far as like a claim to fame, I've worked on a few cars you may have seen in some magazines, some projects you may have heard of over the years. I mean, there's no grade eight winners in there or anything like that, but uh, I'm really proud of some of the ones I've worked on. If you got a Mac Tool distributor, you get a Mac Tool catalog. You may have seen the Model A that I worked on at Tucci Hot Rods. I did a bunch of the metalwork on that car while I worked there. You know, I've worked on some cool cars along the years. The, the AMX GT, you know, if anybody's an AMC fan out there, the five or six of you that exist, but that's a recreation of a concept car AMC had back in the day. I did a lot of the chassis and suspension work on that car while I was working for a shop in Pennsylvania. Any of the pictures that I've had floating here while I'm talking about this are all either pieces of project that I have personally done or cars that I have personally worked on in my time as an automotive fabricator and a metal shaper. All right, folks, thanks for coming around. Hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you enjoyed the q and I wanted to engage with you folks a little bit. I try to do so in the comments all the time, but I thought it'd be a little more personal to really answer your questions on camera. Please share my videos. I don't usually ask that, but I really wanna hit 5,000 subscribers before SEMA comes up, and I wanna do that giveaway at 5,000 for you folks. So till we get there, I'm not gonna do that. So help me out, let's get to 5,000 before SEMA 2018. And here's my disembodied voice because my camera battery died while filming the outro. Go ahead and drop the video a like if you found it interesting. Let me know in the comments down below. What do you think of this? What do you think of my answers to the questions? Go ahead and subscribe to the channel for more content every week. Thanks for coming around, folks.